All right, so I'm grabbing a new cover and we'll pull, we'll stretch this thing on. This has a couple areas that are sewn that'll make it a little bit easier on this console to be able to actually kind of pull the cover on and it'll hold itself in place and then we'll be able to pull it tight and staple it. Because there's two seams at the back and there's two little seams in the front that are sewn that uh, they'll hook on the corners here. Makes it a little bit easier than a lot of other ones uh, to get it centered and lined up and everything. Then we'll staple it. Let me go through the staples real quick before I start putting that on. So I got a poultry staple gun. So the difference in a poultry staple gun is it's got a long nose to it. So you can get down into uh, in between some of the plastic crevices and stuff. I don't think it's that imperative on this one. Uh, not not crazy imperative because uh, there's no real deep spots it's got to get a staple into. But uh, this makes life a whole lot easier. The biggest thing is going to be the size of staples. So the uh, we use mainly for the majority of the staples we're going to use is a real small. This is a 5 30 seconds. So it's a real small staple. 5 30 seconds. So it's big enough it'll, it'll go through the plastic. It'll, I mean, it'll go through the cover and into the plastic, but it won't bust through the plastic. Now, in some of the corners, if we have multiple layers of the cover where it's, you know, if it's making a turn or something and you've got a couple layers folded over like that that has to staple through, you'll need a little bit longer staple because you've got more material folded up. On those, I use a quarter inch staple. Um, quarter inch is pretty common, but the 530 seconds, something you hear can't find at you know, Lowe's or Home Depot that often. I, I buy these online, um, you know, Amazon or you know, any upholstery supply shop, get a 530 second staple. Like I said, not common, you can't get it at Lowe's or Home Depot, but you're gonna need a small staple like that, um, 530 seconds. So here we go. So now, and I got the air compressor turned down to about 60 PSI. Um, you can kind of adjust it, you know, uh, when you're doing it, but uh, it, much higher than that, you'll, you'll want to just it'll blow through the cover. So when you run the staple, it'll just it'll just puncture all the way through it. You don't want that either. So I found usually about 60, sometimes 70, right around in there, will uh, will usually uh, do really good. If it's too low, that's not going to go all the way in. But uh, right now I'm running at 60. We'll see if we need to adjust it as we roll here. Let's see what staples I got in here. Should be 5:30 seconds. Yep. Okay. All right, now here's our cover. You can tell the front because it's got the bigger cutouts there. And all right, we're gonna stretch this guy on. So we'll start just sliding the back in. Here's what I was talking about with those seams. It just comes back in there and sit, sits in place because there's that seam there and that seam there. So the next places are here and here, and there's some seams sewn in this. So where the seam is, you don't want to grab it right at the seam and pull because you don't want to put a lot of stress on it. So I'm going to kind of pull to the sides of it. Or when you're pulling it, don't pull apart. Don't pull it apart, pull straight out and up and around. Same thing here. Okay. So what that does is it gets us at least somewhat on there, okay, so it's in place. A lot of other covers are just, just completely wrapped around the staple without seams, so you really got to line it up a whole lot more when you're first putting it on. So this one at least gets us started. So what we're going to do is, one of the things about this cover, let me show you, let me pull this off real quick. There's a groove in the side right here, okay, there's an indentation in the, uh, in the cover, uh, in the plastic, and that's where this seam, that stitch line is going to fit, there we go, this seam line here is going to sit inside of that because you've got some thickness behind it where the seams come to the two materials come together. So that, that groove lets this, uh, the, the fabric from the seam to sit down in there so it sits really nice and flush. So that's what we're going to be stretching it to, just making sure we got that seam lined up in the groove of the uh, plastic. That up another. There we go. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll start with a couple staples. I'll start to pull this down and make sure it's lining up in the in that groove, and I'll shoot a couple staples just to kind of hold it in place. You can feel in the when you run your fingers back up through here, you'll be able to feel that groove in there and make sure that and you'll be able to feel the 
seam sitting in that groove. Okay. I'll just shoot one to hold. Okay. So we, when we cut these, we, we add a little extra length on the side so you got some more to grab onto than the factory one. Uh, so you, it's easier to have more material to grab onto to pull and stretch it. So afterwards we'll come through and we'll trim a lot of that excess off, but it's really nice to have that excess there when you're putting it on, when you're stretching it on, so you got more to grab onto to pull and stretch. So. We're starting along, looking nice and straight. Okay, let's get our other side. Okay, so this side's gonna be a little bit tighter because we've, we've pulled tight here. We're sitting in the groove. We know it's sitting in the groove, so it's position, positioned in the right spot. But we're going to, I might even heat this with a heat gun, get a little stretch out of the vinyl. It's going to be a little easier. Yeah, I could pull it, but I'm going to get a heat gun and heat that up so it'll stretch a little bit easier. So I'm going to just heat the top part, top and the sides. You can overheat it, because I always keep my hand on the vinyl. If it's too hot to my hand, then I. No, I got too much heat on it to back off some, but this is going to help us stretch quite a bit. This is what makes it install tricky if you have, if you did it all leather, because the leather is not going to stretch as much as vinyl when it's hot. Um, so it makes it a lot trickier on an all leather uh, console. The factory uses vinyl on them, um, mainly because of the stretch. Uh, so if you order all leather, this part here can be pretty tough to get stretch. We're close. Right, we'll give that a whirl. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Constantly feeling for that groove with my hands here. Make sure it's sitting in there. And when we're on this side, when we're pulling it tight, we want to make sure that this line is straight. Because if you pull too much on one one section or the other, then this line, this seam will start to kind of wave. So we want to make sure we get it all pulled about the same tightness on it. So we're sitting straight. That's what I'm constantly checking when I pull up here. Looks good. Oh, 
Everything's looking good. Pretty good. The front. That. So I'm getting a little bit of a pucker right here, so I'm going to heat this a little bit, see if I can stretch this part down and smooth that out a little bit. So I'm gonna start making this turn here. So I wanna pull this material kind of back this way and that way so it starts to layer on that fold. Kinda of like that, there we go. And then all this, I'll start trying to work this excess out, push them back this way, so. Grab here and start pulling it that way some. There we go. That gets us our nice rounded edge right there. And then where I've got these extra folds, that double material, so I'll fold that down. Then I'll probably grab my quarter inch staples to go through that because we got a couple thicknesses of material. So I'll need a little bit longer staple to get that sucker to stay in. But we'll come back and finish that out in a minute. We'll do the same thing here. I'll heat that a little bit. And rounded that looks good we'll work on our front pieces here and here I'll try 
I might need around a quarter on these. We'll see. Let's heat that and stretch those. Okay. So, what I don't want is to have this this little point where it's sewn together. That showing. I want to try to pull that point past the edge of the uh, console there, so it's a nice smooth deal. I don't see that point, so I'm going to try to pull it out and stretch it back so see there the end of the stitch is right up in here and so I've got the material pulled over there so I don't want that that stitch to show there there we go and when you're shooting your staple try to shoot it towards the end of the material closer you know further into the inside of the console because if I shoot it here and it rips through or something then and the tension comes back some you made that where it shot through and that you may see that tear may come back toward the front so you always want to shoot closest to the closer to the end of the material um, don't shoot right up on the edge because uh, you don't want you, you don't want a chance of that being seen or if it rips through the tension if it ripped right through there the tension of the material this top flap would start to peel back some and you'd see it so give yourself some extra room Shoot towards the, the bottom of it. Leave yourself some slack when you're shooting that. And I'm not mashing this thing hard into the into the plastic. If I do, it'll probably bust it through the uh, through the vinyl. Um, just getting it on there, holding it loose, and then shooting. But you can adjust your air. 60 psi seems to be working good on here. I hadn't had many. Really blow through if it's blown through because I've been had too much pressure down on it. I need a quarter on that one. We'll come back at the end and put a quarter through there. A quarter inch staple. Let me heat this one spool down. Okay. Okay, pull up and out. So you can see my very tip, you don't see the seam at all. Nice and rounded, the edge of the seam is on the back side. So what I'll do is I'll flatten that out with, uh, mash this thing down, and then I'll run some bigger staples, probably the quarter inch, down through that to hold that, hold that down real tight. There we go, just one here. Switch to quarter inch. These consoles aren't difficult, it's just kind of tedious, and there's a lot of stretching and pulling to get it right before you can run your staple. That's the, the biggest pain. It's just a little time consuming to get it stretched on right. You definitely need heat, you definitely need a heat gun to to get it to be able to stretch, it's just saving your savings up a lot of time and effort and your forearms from burning too bad. Okay. Okay, I like that. I'll come and put some more 5.30 seconds along this this rim here. But uh, let's go ahead and stretch our back. Front's looking good there. Well, I'm gonna, let's go ahead and finish the front, actually. Let me switch back to the 5.30 seconds. 
I'm gonna heat the front end again so I can stretch those. We got a little room for forgiveness on this front rim here because we got the uh, your latch assembly goes on and it's got a little bit of a lip on the back side. You get a little bit of rim that goes around it, so it'll cover a little bit up. But we should be able to get everything done without seeing any plastic there. Front's looking pretty good. Got a little bulge right there. Let me look on the back side and see if I can tighten that down. That looks like this little flap here. Let me just shoot another staple on that guy. There we go. Shoot another one here. See if I can flatten that down and get a quarter inch in there. Okay, so this little ridge right here is what I'm wanting to try to flatten out that right there. So I'm going to take the nose by this table gun and I'm going to push some pressure down here and then kind of walk it back to set that thing smooth and then. Boom. Yep. Quarter didn't grab it. Just pull that out. Let's see what I can do. There we go. Looks like it held pretty decent. Push it in a little harder here. Yeah, that flattened it down a good bit right there. So I don't have that high ridge. This one's sitting a little better. I'll probably still put a, a staple quarter there to flatten that down. Yeah, it didn't get all the way the plastic. There we go. All right, that held that down. Yeah, 530 seconds definitely not going to get down in there. So having the quarters are good to be able to get that. Go back to 530 seconds. Again, we're gonna come back at the end, cut that excess off. So that's all looking good. Seams are good. All right, we'll heat and stretch the back, get those stapled on. Good. 
couple down at the bottom of this. Some here. Okay, so we're stapled on. Everything's looking good there. All right, so now we'll start reassembling. We'll get our. Uh, let's go ahead and do the the uh, power panel in the middle, so we can do our cuts and everything for that. Okay, so here are the let's see three, four, five, six, seven, seven holes that correspond with this. This definitely goes this particular way. The three, one, two, three are on the back, so that's there. So when I flip this over, that's gonna go here. So we'll need some scissors. We'll start to trim out the vinyl a little bit. You think you get a nice window inside, so you can always cut a little bit. I'm like, I'm gonna give a little. Let me wrap actually. Let's see here. I might staple everything for I trim it. I'll get a little excess room. So I'm gonna probably cut on 45s, kind of back here and back here a little bit, and I can see back here how much room I got. So I may cut to about right here and cut to about right here, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip over and go ahead and roll this down, staple around my rim and then uh, we can trim the rest of the excess out so I'm gonna give myself a little bit of extra slack uh, to staple with the stretch and stuff so there's that let's go back to here a little bit Ish. okay so now staple gun we'll go around I can feel that ridge all the way down I'm gonna put a staple right at the bottom of it I don't want to push too hard with my staple gun or it's going to tear it. But right about there, staple. If I hadn't cut this this uh, slit in it, pushing down here, when I started getting to the back to push on, it's going to be, there would have been a whole lot of tension on it. That's why I cut that little 45, because i got to staple all the way back to this ridge here. And back here in this corner, I may have to even cut a little more to release that tension. That one went through the vinyl and the staple's still in there. I'm gonna pull that sucker out. There we go. Okay. Let's get some at the back here. a little harder here we go okay keep on rolling around the corner cut some more slack here
can always feel where that rim is. So I know I, I'm, my next row of staples is going to be up here. And there's my curve, so I'm going to cut some tension out. There we go. Relax it a little bit. There we go. Here we go. Okay, so now our this piece will drop in, but we got we got to trim the vinyl back to expose the holes for all the screws. So with everything stapled, now we can come back and we can cut right along the edge there, so we get we can get to this holes for the screws. But if we cut the hole a whole lot bigger, then you wouldn't have much to to grab onto to pull or anything like that. To be able to, to staple in, if we just if it was cut around the edge there, it'd be a lot harder to be able to get it stretched in and stapled on. So a lot easier to have a smaller hole and be able to trim it as you're going, like this. Once we're stapled on, then we can come back and trim. Trim a little more material out. Good. Okay, let's give it a whirl. Okay, three holes are at the back. Make sure that's got clearance. Yep, that all pushes in. Okay, so that'll go. So we're going to grab our well, impact. I got it turned all the way down um, to the lowest setting because these are all plastic threads and you don't want to torque it too tight, but you can really, it'll strip right through it. So come through here.
Okay, so we'll get our top. Perfect. It's all sitting down there nicely. You don't see any staples. It's all covered up. Looking good. So now we need to put our charging plate back in. And remember the uh, the plug for the wires just faces down is where that thing goes. So this sucker will sit like that. So the chrome stuff facing out. Get our screws. That. Now we got our front plate, or front the, the latch. This guy. That fits like that. That slides right in. We got our longer screw. This is going to be a Phillips. This is where it goes on the very front, right through here. And then we got two more of our little Torx guys that go here and here. There and then there. Okay. Let's go ahead and tighten the back one first so it draws it all the way back, and then we'll tighten these guys in. in my Phillips. I probably should tighten up before I put the module on, but. Okay, last two. Okay. Now our latch is in place. There we go. Last step, or second last step, charging plate. This just pushes in. Tucks up underneath this lip, it looks like. There we go. Okay, you now our charging rubber plates back in. That's good. Now we need to come trim off the excess around here, all this stuff, so we doesn't we can expose all those uh, anchor points to put it back into the truck. So plus there's extra anchor points on the side here. I'll show you those again. In just a second. Okay, so you got 
these spots here, that's where some of the big, the big plastic panel that snaps onto it, those pop in. So those, those are up and down the sides here. So we got to make sure those are all clear. So we'll just come trim along our edge. Don't cut across the seam there. Make sure you come and fan out because that's the last point we need right there. Just don't cut across your stitch line. It'll start coming undone. Okay, make sure all these are extra clear. So I need to snap in. Okay. So we got our anchor points are all clear. These are all clear so we can snap that back into the truck. And that is your install Chevy console lid. There we go. If you got any other pieces in your truck that are worn out, let us know. We can get you hooked up. All of our stuff matches factory original. So that way you can replace you know, a piece at a time, whether it's a console lid that needs to recover, your driver bottom seat's messed up, you know, whatever piece needs to be replaced. We can do that all a piece at a time. All based off the VIN number, just give us the VIN. We can pull everything up. That way we can get the right cover seal to match with your interior and with your vehicle. We got great videos like this to show you how to put all those pieces on, the bottoms, tops, all that kind of stuff. So if you like the video, help us out. Give us a like. And like always, check us out on all the social media channels. We put all kinds of content out all the time, guys. Appreciate it. Have a good one.